kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Date back to Monday, Mr. Eastman said, pretty simply, most men lead lives of quiet desperation. Not us. That's not why we do this. You get to play a game today that's a celebration, gentlemen. You get to play a game and compete. Not many people do that. If anybody could do what we did, we'd have a thousand people in this locker room, but we don't. We don't have a thousand. We have 128. Because you've earned this right. Because you don't live lives of quiet desperation. So we go out today, you look at the guy on your right and the guy on your left. And don't you ever forget your three responsibilities. You love one another. You be the best you can be. And you lean on them one another with God's kids on them. What's on in it? Ah! Ah! Lean on ah! For us, brotherhood's everything. The game of football is an avenue to teach boys how to become men. The season is a journey. It's a step-by-step -step progression. The work starts now. You can do whatever you want to do. You can be whatever you want to be. Talent's going to take you so far, but effort's going to put you over the top. We're in Cincinnati, Ohio, coming to you from Coleraine High School, where we're going to watch Coach Steve Specht and the Cincinnati St. X Bombers take on the Coleraine Cardinals. Welcome to Gridirons TV. I think I'm one of the fortunate ones. I knew when I was younger that I wanted. This is all I wanted to do. I wanted to teach and I wanted to coach. And for the most part, it was the experience that I had with the coaches uh, that coached me. That was a difference maker for me. I, I just, I gravitated towards the sport. I loved the game. You know, I always talked to the kids and we were talking earlier. Football's not a game that kids necessarily love. They love the experience associated with it, but I loved everything about it. And I knew, just I loved my coaches, uh, what they did for me. And I knew I wanted to be a part of it. And that was all through high school. Uh, so I studied. I studied the coaches that seemed to have a positive impact on kids. And I studied the ones that didn't have a positive impact on kids. And I was able to kind of apply my trade, uh, what I do today. Uh, it's, a, it's a combination of, of what I saw I liked. I took a lot of great things from coaches that were positive with me. And I took away some things that I never wanted to do, just because of the experience. But all through high school, all through college, I knew this is where I wanted to be, and like I said, I, I've been very blessed. What would you say your coaching philosophy is uh, as a head coach versus, I'm sure you've been an assistant or a coordinator at some time. Sure. Has it changed throughout the years? <laughs> it, it has to change. I, I, when I speak at clinics, I'll have a slide that talks about the perception of team. Everybody looks at it as a pyramid, and at the top of the pyramid, you have the individual player, and the parents are watching that in their son in the game of football. Um, I watch my kids. You know, when they were growing up, I'd want a little bit below the pyramid. You have the position coaches. They love their guys, and it's so hard when you want to take a defensive back and make him a receiver, because he might play as a receiver. Defensive back says, like, "You can't take him. He's my guy." <laughs> well, no, he's. You know, you get territorial with your people. A little bit lower, you have your coordinators. The offensive coach wants to score a lot of points. The defensive coach wants the offensive coach to run the ball to shorten the game. And at the bottom, you have your strength coach, the alumni, and the head coach. You've got the whole team. And my goal is to flip that and to have everybody buying into the team concept, to have the parents not only watching their son, but watching the team, watching the kids celebrating the play and not the player. I guess that's my philosophy is to try to get a lot of moving parts working in the same direction now as a head coach. And my goal is to see kids get better. That's all I want to do. We, today, we're... We get to play a game, it's week two, what do I want? I want to see improvement. I want to see kids getting better. Do we want to come out with a win? Absolutely. The goal is to win the game. But, but if you see improvement, I think as a head coach, I've really found 
you, you really look at that end of it more than you, you're worrying about the wins, the losses. You know, are your guys playing well? Did they get better? Nah, that's kind of my focus. Has that always been an issue with the, the parents watching the specific kid versus the team, or do you think that's more prevalent today with the whole combine, right, you know, camps? It what seems like question. as social media evolves and everything keeps going, it's all about the kid and where he's accepted his offer to versus just showing up and playing. Boy, that's a great question. Um, parents love their kids. I, I, tell, I open my staff meetings all the time. Just remember, guys, we're dealing with the most important thing in somebody else's life. And you can't take that for granted. I don't have a problem with parents. They love their kids. I love my kids. And that's what we're focused on. I do think that the social media aspect of it, the the five-star, four-star rating, which doesn't make any sense to me. Somebody was asked, I said, Luke Keekley played for me, was a three-star guy at best. He's doing pretty well for himself. You know, that, that kind of skews what we're trying to do at the high school level because it becomes about the player and not the team. Um, but, but parents love their kids, and that's, a, that's the way it's supposed to be. I tell kids all the time, that's a great problem to have when you have unconditional love from a parent, um, but you just have to try to balance it. And as long as parents understand it's about the young man developing, growing, and getting better, and not about their lives, and how am I being impacted by my son, you know that that's the balance you have to you have to strike that balance somewhere has your style changed since when you started as a young assistant to where you are now as a head coach, has it changed in the way you approach kids, or are you still sort of sticking to your same principles? No, you change. You have to change. You have to evolve. Uh, change is inevitable. You have to embrace it. But the thing that happens, look, I'm 40. I'm 48 years old now. When I was 22 years old, I was coaching a lot differently than I am now. My relationship with the kids was a lot different when I was younger. I could relate more with. These guys play music now, and I, <laughs> and I was like, what, what in God's name is that? I, I can't relate to that. And so that changes. You know, I look at it more of a, I'm more of a father figure to these kids now off the field. When I was a younger, I was a brother. So it, I've evolved, I've changed uh, to the point where I'm hiring young coaches. Uh, Brian Lanehart's a perfect example, a young 26-year-old who can relate to these kids. He's energetic, he runs with them, he lifts with them. I couldn't run or lift with him because I'd pull all kind of muscles every time. So that's how you evolve as a coach. Um, I don't think my style necessarily has changed, but how I deal with the kids has. Okay, and what would you say to like, a, let's say a 30, 35 year old head coach who's sort of in the middle, right? He wants to try to relate to the kids, but he also wants to be that father figure, but maybe he doesn't even have kids. How does, he, how does he play that back and forth? Well, I you think don't want to be somebody you're not. You right, know? you have to be yourself. And yeah. I, that's exactly what I was about to say. Don't change who you are. Don't try to be somebody else because kids see right through it. I think it happens in time. You don't want to be, you don't want to be older than you are. And you sure don't want to be younger than you are. You want to be in the moment, live in the moment. When we talk to kids all the time, you've got to live in the moment. Don't try to be somebody you're not. Be the best you you can be. So my advice to any young guy that's coaching, I've said it all the time, it better be about the kids. If you're in high school coaching because you want to win games and make a name for yourself, go to the next level. Stay out of high school. It's got to be about the kids, giving back to these kids and what they're trying to accomplish. Understand why we do this. Because like we were talking before with social media, you can get caught up in the wins and losses and all that craziness. Uh, and I don't think that's positive. Touchdown. And the support that you get from the administration and your athletic directors and your other coaches, it's it's obviously apparent that you guys have a lot of support here. Um, is that important to a head coach to really know that he's got, you know, his administration, you know, full support? You know, he can run his program and not have to worry about all the things on the sidelines. Oh, yeah. Um, when I was interviewing for jobs, uh, I was fortunate to get this job, but I was interviewing for other head coaching jobs, and that was the most important thing to me was what kind of support 
am I going to get from the administration? And, and that's hard to tell in an interview to really understand are they going to support support you in a lot of different ways. Uh, if, if it's about wins and losses, I don't want to be a part of that school. It's got to be about the development of the kids. And I've always felt, St. Xavier High School, they've always told me, now we've been very fortunate to win a lot of games, but they've always said it isn't about winning the games that matters. We, what's the product look like 10 years from now, 15 years from now? I want to know where are my kids today? Are they, are they being contri positive contributors in society? And we have a 10 year reunion uh, this year of our 2005 state championship team. And I was reading these articles about where these kids are today, Wall Street banker, uh, pediatrician, and going down the line of all, what all these kids are doing now. And it's, that's the bonus check for any high school teacher or coaches to see the impact these guys are having in the world. And, and that's what I think that when you talk about support, administrative support to understand if this is just about wins and losses, I don't want to be a part of this one. I want to be a part of something that cares about building kids. You build great kids, you're going to win football games. And that was, that's always kind of been the mantra I've lived by throughout. Give me great, I don't need a great coach, I need a great person that can become a great coach. I need a great kid that's going to work his tail off to become a better player. You get those, those factors involved, you're going to be successful. How do you manage 31 odd coaches? That's a lot of personalities. That's a lot of opinions. Oh, I don't coach much anymore, Paul. I uh, I manage. You know, it's it's almost like being a CEO of a company. I've got to manage a lot of different personalities. Um, I have a lot of help. You know, I, I shoot. And we talked about my my mom's group that's making getting a breakfast together for the kids today. You know, I I know that's taken care of. I've got one coach assigned. He takes care of that end of it. You know, we delegate to a lot of different coaches, give them more responsibility. I have an assistant head coach, Danny Haverkamp, who's a young guy, played for me here, graduate. A lot of great people. So how do you manage it all? You find great people to make you look good. And I always tell the kids, hire up. When you're in a position to hire, hire people smarter than you so that you look smarter. And that's what we have here. It's, it's a true team effort. Have you thought about coaching at the next level or have you been approached about coaching at the next level in your career? Yeah, you, you, is it a fit? That's the thing. I, I don't know that I'm a, a college coach. Um, I, I've been very blessed to be where I am. I'm, I love what I do. I wake up every morning wanting to go to work. Uh, I talk to college coaches all the time through the recruiting game. I see their lives and what they go through. I don't know if that fits me um, right now. Maybe after my boys graduate, then I start looking at things differently. But I'm going to be older, and you know, it's a young man's game anymore. So I, I don't know. I feel very blessed to be where I am. I, I've never been one to look and see the grass is always is the grass greener over there. I, I've been very content to do what I'm doing here, um, and I think that's the key: is to find something you love and work hard at being the best you can at it. And I don't know that there's a better job than what I have here. What would you say keeps you coming back every single day? What's the sort of, if you were to come away with one or two things that just keeps you getting up every day and coming back, what would you say is the most important? The kids. The kids, uh, everybody, is, it's crazy, but everybody thinks that Friday nights and the games are exciting. Um, that's a drudgery for me. I love, my, I love Sunday game planning through Thursday practices, working with the kids. Game days, there's too, much, uh, too many other things going on. It, it's just crazy, it's monotonous. Um, you know, I wake up looking forward to seeing the kids and seeing how they how they're developing, how they're getting better. Uh, and I hope it always stays that way. I think if it ever changes, then I'd have to reconsider what I'm doing.